Hello, in this video I'll talk about signed and unsigned integers. Here I've got a sample program that does a little bit of string manipulation. Let's compile and run the program and you'll see that it prints out a string before and after it's been uh, manipulated and the manipulation we're doing here is changing each position in the string to be an asterisk character. So let's imagine that we're working with passwords or something like that. Now notice the program compiled and ran um, just fine and let's take this same program and compile it on a different system. And notice on this system, we get this warning. And it says here on line 16, warning, comparison between signed and unsigned integer expressions. Now line 16 we can see here is this line here. And perhaps you've gotten this warning on your system. Well, what is that telling us? Well, first of all, we notice that we didn't get this warning consistently on all systems. This is an example of some of the variability in a language like C++. Languages do change over time. Okay, so what does this mean, signed and unsigned integers? Okay, so let's talk about integers. In programming languages like C++ and Java, we have an integer type, and it can be positive or negative. Uh, it can be zero, and then it supports some range of positive and negative values. Here I'll label that min and max. Now the exact values for min and max will depend on what kind of system you're on, but on many systems min and max both, both may be in the range of 4.2 billion or so. Now what would happen if we decided that we didn't need to represent these negative values? So let's create here an unsigned int. And we'll start at zero. And here is plus max. So an unsigned integer is an integer that can only be um, zero or positive and not take on a negative value. Now, if the underlying representation of this integer is some patterns of zeros and ones, that means we have a bunch of patterns here that correspond to these patterns that aren't being used. Well, rather than leaving them unused, we'll just use that so that we can extend the positive range greater. And that takes us out to about two times the original maximum. Okay, so that we don't have any unused patterns. All right, so in the signed or default integer type, we can go uh, negative to positive, and then in the unsigned integer, we can go from zero to some larger value. Okay, now, everybody agrees that mixing signed and unsigned integers together uh, is a dangerous situation and one that we want to um, avoid. But different folks and different languages have different opinions on what strategy to use to minimize those situations. For example, C++ and Java use different strategies. One common situation where signed and unsigned values come together is when we're dealing with the size of some kind of container. For example, a string. You know that a string has a length or a size, and that's something that we might like to measure. Now, the size of a string can only be zero or greater. The string can never have negative characters. So we might say that the size of a string is something that's measured by an unsigned integer. So let's put in the interaction here of a couple of different values. So if we have a container like a string and we say that we want to get its size and assign that to a variable, we know that this variable here can only be zero or greater. So we have to deal with you know, what happens in this transition between the size of the container and the variable. Now, once you have that variable that represents the size in a variable, what if we compare that to another variable? So you have this possible comparison here. So in both of these comparisons, we're dealing with possibly comparing signed and unsigned 
variables. Now, the designers of C++ would say that this is the comparison that's more dangerous, but the designers of Java would say that this one here is the one that's more dangerous. And so they've developed differing strategies for how to deal with that. C++ supports integers and unsigned integers, but Java only has regular integers. So in the Java programming language, you don't have an unsigned integer uh, type. All right, well, let's see how this all relates to this sample program that we've written here. Okay, well, one way that we could um, avoid this warning, because the warning we're getting here is between the when we measure the size of the container, so right here when we say test string dot length, and we're asking the string what its length, in C++, in modern C++, that value will come as an unsigned integer because it can only be zero or greater. So this value here is an unsigned integer. And i here is a signed integer. Notice, because I just said int. And so that's why I'm getting this warning here. Comparison between a signed and an unsigned integer. One way to fix this problem, and not the way I'm going to recommend that you fix this, is to declare i itself as unsigned. And now i is unsigned, and the test string dot length is unsigned. It's all unsigned. I'll save and recompile run the program again and notice that it runs exactly the same. All right, well, the problem with doing it this way is that if we want to interact with i with any further value or, or calculation, we can have this pitfall where the uh, unsigned and the signed values are still working together. So let's make a change to this program. And since we're imagining that we're working with passwords, let's say that we don't want to change the very last character. You know, on many systems, mobile systems, as you're logging in, you uh, all of the characters that you type are shown as dots or stars or something like that, except for the last one, so that you can make sure that you haven't made a typo on your keyboard. So let's change this so that we stop one position sooner. All right. Well, let's recompile and run the program again. And notice, looks like it's working just fine. Our string is modified, all of the characters, except for the very last one, which comes out without being changed. OK, so we're good, except now we'll make one last change. And instead of running through this string, let's run through a blank string. And we'll recompile and run. I notice this time the program crashes. It says segmentation fault 11. OK, what has happened here? Well, here, test strength dot length is 0. And 0 minus 1 is negative 1. But this is an unsigned value. It can't have a value of negative 1. That value of negative 1, that pattern now represents some large positive value. For example, 4.2 billion. So what this loop here says now is i equals 0, i is less than 4.2 billion. Now, our string is blank. And so as it tries to move through this string up to position 4.2 billion, none of which those positions exist, it's going to generate this segmentation fault. Segmentation fault uh, means that we exceeded here the bounds of the string. So this is all because of trying to uh, mix signed and unsigned values. All right, so let's take a different approach. And instead of this being an unsigned variable, let's put it back to being a regular signed integer. Instead of using the length command here, let's assign this as a separate variable. And so here, I'll create a length variable and set that to be the test string dot length. And now, here in this program, we'll use the length variable. Now, by assigning it separately here, I've already accomplished the conversion of test string dot length to a signed or regular integer variable. 
let's put back our full string message and then we'll recompile and run the program and we'll see we're back to encoding the entire string as asterisks. We'll go one less and compile and run and it works. Now both versions of the program has worked but now we're going to see where the difference is. Here we'll comment out the first line and put the empty string back in. Recompile and run the program. And notice this time we don't have the segmentation fault. It works fine with the blank string. That's because here length minus 1 is 0 minus 1 is negative 1. 0 is not less than negative 1. The loop drops out with ever executing. And so we don't ever exceed the bounds of the string, which is exactly what we want. In this video, we saw a little bit about the interaction of signed and unsigned integers. Thank you.